Once again, good evening, hockey fans. Welcome to Rensselaer in Houston Fieldhouse for tonight's non-league matchup between the Minutemen of the University of Massachusetts and your engineers of Rensselaer. To meet tonight's starting lineups, first the visitors from UMass, starting in the goal, number 35, Philae Lindbergh. On defense, number five, Mario Ferraro. And number three, Ty Farmer. The starting forward line for UMass at left wing, number eight, Bobby Trevino. At center, number 18, Jake Gaudet. And the right wing for the Minutemen, number 21, Mitchell Chafee. The head coach of the Minutemen is Greg Carville. And now, let's meet the starting lineup for the engineers of RPI. Leading your engineers on the ice tonight, please welcome the junior engineer, Emmett Kaiser. For the engineers starting in the goal, a sophomore from Victoria, British Columbia, number one, Lyndon Marshall. On defense, a freshman from Bloomington, Minnesota, number 23, Jake Johnson. At right defense, a junior from Toronto, Ontario, number 24, Will Riley. He's starting forward for the engineers. At left wing, he's a freshman from Calgary, Alberta, number 13, Tommy Lee. At center, a senior from St. Mary's, Ontario, number 21, Brady Whiffin. And that right wing, a junior from Phoenix, Arizona, number 17, Todd Burgess. The rest of the engineers, their head coach is Dave Smith, assistant coaches Dan Jewell and Chuck Weber. Ladies and gentlemen, in light of the tragedy that occurred in Schoharie last week, we'd like to acknowledge those families and community members profoundly impacted by the loss of those 20 precious lives. We remind you, your RPI hockey family is with you during this difficult time. We ask you all now that you please observe a moment of silence in their memory. Thank you. And now we ask that you please rise, remove your hats, ladies and gentlemen, to honor and respect our two great nations and the men and women who serve and continue to serve. We ask that you rise, remove your hats for the performance of the national anthems of Canada and the United States of America.
Indy hockey fans, welcome to the Houston Fieldhouse, RPI TV, bringing you tonight's home opener. It's the engineers and the UMass Amherst coming to you from the from, from Press Row tonight, Perryless Garrison, and Jeff Morris. And uh, we should have an exciting one for you. These two teams combined for seven goals last night. Uh, unfortunately, six of them went to UMass, but the engineers looking for a better result here tonight. They'll start on the penalty kill uh, with RPI uh, looking to do a little bit better than did last night. Not, not the start RPI wanted, of course, away. They'll try to get something going here with a hard dump and a hard check. Engineers come in 0-1, of course. UMass want to know these two teams played last night. 6-1 was the final quick shot here wide of the goal by Will Riley. And it'll be flipped to, towards the blue line out to center ice. Back come the Minutemen. Quickly into the zone. Drop pass shot. Tip wide. And uh, it'll be fed out of the zone. Gathered in again by UMass. Engineers skating from right to left here. As a good bit of pestering there from the freshman Tour Linden. Centerman and a freshman from Great Falls, Virginia. As that one's flipped in, it'll... Uh, I think it hopped out of play. And we'll get a stoppage here. Just uh, 43 seconds in, Jeff, no score. Engineers uh, had a good start last night, five on five, but the penalty kill really hurt them early on, looking to do better in that department, and maybe not take those penalties that they did. Yeah, Lyndon Marshall uh, started last game. He's going to have to shake that one off, give a, a better performance here for the hometown crowd as we got a penalty coming up. Face off here, won by UMass. And we already do, we do have a penalty. The UMass coming out of their zone, looking to start up ice for the Dutchman. They get Minimans, rather, they get it in deep. Coming back to the point, and player goes down, dumps it in the corner. John Letter now behind his net. He'll have to regroup out of the zone. Minimac going 200 feet to restart their breakout. Cole McCarr, Kale McCarr, starting things off here for the Minutemen. As he starts getting out of zone, it's Mary, Mario Ferraro now regrouping to Ty Farmer. Farmer up ice, finds his man, chipped into the zone halfway. Now picked up by the Minuteman deep. Cycle back to the point. Ferraro, back to Ferraro. Wide side to Keats. Shot on goal. That one's chipped out of the zone by the engineers and a full change. Coming for RPI. 25 seconds left to go on the man advantage for the Miniman. Here's Ferraro. Speed through the neutral zone. He chips it in deep. Around the horn it goes. Laganoff. Shot steered aside by Marshall. And that one's fired, and that'll do it for the remaining five seconds of the Miniman man advantage. RPI returns to full strength. Ferraro behind his own net, finds his head man up. Now the bin man through neutral ice. Mika. Now Felix. Shot coming in a goal. By Bobby Kaiser from the high slot. And it's 1-0 Miniman. First goal of the season for Bobby Kaiser.
And a UMass backup ice here. one nothing on the power play goal. Or excuse me, the even strength goal. Here's McCarr trying to walk his way in. Still McCarr centering. is actually a shot and a save made off the stick of McCarr. He had two goals and two assists last night for UMass. This is icing here on UMass. So not a, not a power play goal. And Jairns were able to kill it off, but then right after that, uh, UMass able to pick up the first goal of this game. Yeah, just a 40-foot shot from the high slot there. And plenty of traffic in front, so you credit Miniman for getting those bodies in front. Good cycle down the wall, and Bobby Kaiser's first, first collegiate goal comes at the hands of Lyndon Marshall and these engineers. It's a nice passing with fluid through the neutral zone. So right now, Minutemen are having uh, no problem getting through this neutral zone. By number 26, Colin Felix. Shot comes, it was blocked on the try by Johnson. Penalty coming up. It's going to go on UMass here. And they're going to get Mika for hooking. Might have said Bobby Kaiser on that goal. I meant Anthony Del Geizo. And he's going to go for a penalty as well. Penalty was actually on Del Geizo. I misspoke there. But uh, a power play, nonetheless, for the engineers. They're one for seven on the year. Here's Riley. Ja for Johnson. Turns towards the point. He'll dump it in. Clearing effort. Just sneaks, uh, sneaks by the RPI freshman blue liner. Back out to center for Riley. Here's Mears Moore just off the bench. Scored in the exhibition game. And it's Prince Edward Island turned to be the game winner. This is flipped back out to center. Thought it was a hand pass there. It hit Moore's glove, but we play on. Now Burgess. Five minutes into the first period. 1-0 UMass leads. Both teams have had a power play. The engineers are on theirs. Now Hallbauer spins around. Lost in the skate. Shorthanded try here. Mika across. Great stick there by Hallbauer. As the defenseman, uh, Hallbauer, got in the way of that one. To break up the centering pass. Uh, 34 seconds left on this power play, Jeff. Uh, engineers looking to get something started, maybe get something out of it late. Yeah. I was looking at Hallbauer's. He got an assist last night. Yeah, he did on the goal. It was a nice shot from the top of the circle. Power play goal for RPI yesterday on uh, Laka's first career tally. I see. He also gave it to Burgess, I guess, too. <laughs> <laughs> you do sometimes. Here's Moore with a wrister. That one's turned away. Save. And now Lappinen just dumps it in the corner. Penalty is over. And they'll shoot it all the way down. So no icing here. It's beaten out by the man who came out of the box, Anthony Del Geizo. Mika in the corner. 13.42 to go, first period. 1-0 UMass leading. There's a little pin up in front of the uh, corner there. Mears Moore with it, senior from Duluth, Minnesota. Looks cross ice, finds Morello. Jake Morello into the zone. All the way in, still Morello lost it on the stick handle. Throwing a hit in the corner was Ott. Behind the goal. Nico Hildebrandt, wrapped up by Ott. Donovan Ott, one of the stronger players you're going to find in college hockey. Just had that puck pinned up against the wall. Now a shot coming. Deflects wide. That came off the stick of Ferner. 
And we get a whistle offside. A little bit too anxious there was Del Geizo. We get a stoppage here and an extended one. Shots are 5-1 UMass. They lead 1-0. As Perry mentioned, shots five to one, UMass. So far, a couple attempts. A couple attempts from the engineers and they've been blocked or turned away. A couple of times the engineers found themselves alone in the slot only to get bumped or Autovile just jumped it, just dumped it into the shallow corner at the end of that power play. Perhaps he was surprised that he found himself with a, just a couple of feet there. New rule in ECAC hockey, 16, or rather 14, 10, and 8 minutes into the period, they will provide TV timeouts. New this year. Extra stoppages league-wide, of course, so engineers are participating, even though all their home games will be brought to you live here, and we know you're watching on RPI TV. Back in their own zone, UMass has it. It's Ferraro, the sophomore. You see he's wearing an A. This is a very young team and a lot of young leadership as well. They do have uh, Jacob Pritchard, who scored last night, the former St. Lawrence Saint, who's a senior. There aren't many seniors to come by on this club. Patrick Polino in the corner, lapping in, feeds it down low. Tour Linden, a shot off the back of the net. And now Riley. Down low. Polino gets bumped by Ferraro. Mario Ferraro double team but does scoop it along for Ty Farmer. Picked up his first collegiate uh, tally last night against the Engineers. He'll dump it in. Riley back to claim it for the Engineers. Uh, Mr. Irrelevant, the 2016 NHL draft. Or was it 17? Anyway, Riley walking his way in. And he keeps on moving with it. And eventually takes a hit and lost it. Back comes UMass here into the zone. Trevino centering. Uh, actually, a shot came from the circle. And it was held onto by Marshall. Lyndon Marshall played just the first two periods last night. He made 23 saves. Uh, many of the four of the five goals, I think, were off rebounds. And four of them were also power play goals. Yeah, you mentioned Pritchard. Perry and he came over from the Saints. He got 20 points last year with that club. Came over with a graduate transfer. Right. He uh, played for Greg Carville there, so you can imagine there's some connection there. Of course, new head coach of UMass. Here's a wraparound dry puck squeaks all the way through. Yeah, that one crossed the goal mouth, and Lyndon Marshall couldn't get a glove on it. Luckily, his D was there to save him. Hit behind the goal, shot all the way down. This could be icing, and it is. Austin Plebby for the Miniman last year left uh, with a year of eligibility left. And so there's a lot of transfers going around and Miniman getting and receiving and sending players away. Face off in the uh, Massachusetts zone. You have that a lot when you have new coaches. We've seen it here at RPI as well. Changing in the guard, and I think coaches like to get their type of player into the program as quickly as possible. And as, uh, obviously as legally as possible in the college setting, it's not always that easy. Here comes Hayhurst for the engineers. He'll fire it wide of goal. Kept in on the far side by Lockus, or the lone engineers tally. Nice move by Hayhurst, another one. He's tripped up on his way in, penalty coming. As that one's fired wide, Moore with a shot that deflects high and around. And we're going to get a whistle here. And a stoppage in a power play. It'll be a trip on UMass. As Hayhurst, nifty footwork out of the corner. It'll be Hildenbrand going to the box. 
for the Minutemen. The junior. Face off coming up. And uh, one by UMass. They're going to look to clear it and do. Lyndon Marshall back to stop at the sophomore from Victoria, BC. Although jumping in on the play there. Nice poke check by Whiffen. And here come the engineers. Senior captain or assistant captain is Whiffen. Swatted down by Jake Gaudet, the sophomore from Ottawa for UMass. RPI has to regroup in their own zone. Stretch play, Whiffen fails to get it deep. Puck ends up in the Miniman bench. 65 left to go on the man advantage. Engineers looking for their second shot. The game was scoreless till about this point last night. And the way I saw it, RPI, where well, they were out shooting UMass, they were out, out drawing them in the faceoff circle. Uh, five on five, but then the, the couple of power play goals really kind of threw a wrench into their uh, into how they were playing. I think they could stay out of the box. They'll have much certainly a better showing than last night here. Yeah, power play is going to be a key for the engineers this season when they don't have it rolling over 15 percent at least that they their scoring really struggles. As uh, looking to work it out here, UMass that one hit a skate, bounces back to center. First one to it's to be Anthony Del Geizo. He's been active so far tonight. Freshman from Basking Ridge, New Jersey. Didn't have a point last night, but uh, really brings some energy early here for the Minutemen. Will Riley. Off for Hayhurst. Into the zone for Johnson. Jake Johnson down low. Freshman from Bloomington, Minnesota. Now Hayhurst drops it back to the blue line. Nice pass. Riley. Foot towards goal. Deflected in. It's Waka. Know if they're going to look at this, see if that stick. They're talking about it right now, Perry, to see if that stick was was over above the crossbar or not. I think they're going to they're going to keep it. top of the net. Rebound save made. Face off will come outside the zone. So a power play goal for Laka, his second in as many games. Great redirect on the shot by Riley. Secondary assist goes to Hayhurst, who also had an assist last night.
Penalty upcoming for the engineers. Tommy Grant to the box for a hit from behind, behind the net. A minute. Men will be back to the man advantage here. Del Geizo and Pritchard at the point, quarterbacking this advantage for the Minuteman. Puck steered low, and now the engineers have control behind the net. And gently off the glass as that was tipped. Gets to half ice before the Minuteman regain control and have to set up again. 90 seconds to go. Chafee gets his own turnover. A couple of turnovers. Minuteman regain control. Leonard around the horn. And on the near half wall. Now Pritchard deals it back, working as Leonard. And T.J. Samick gains control and fires at the length of the ice. No pressure until the neutral zone for the engineers. As McCarr takes it low and now it's regained by Morello. Morello steers it back into the boards. Trying to eat up time. Lepinen. Make that Hall Bauer. Puck out, now Del Geizo thinks about shooting, fakes it. Over to Ferraro. Worked on to Pritchard, now Ferraro. And then Puck is beat back to center where Farmer has to regain. 30 seconds left to go on the man advantage. Farmer, now to Ferraro. Dumped in deep, Billy Jerry now on the wall. Near side, gives it away to Farmer. Now a shot at a save by Marshall on Ferraro. 15 to go on the man advantage. Faceoff up coming to the right of Marshall. Shot for the Miniman now 8 to 2. As we have a tie game now. Laganoff's going to get tossed. And Trevino into, to take the draw. One by the Miniman. Now Ferraro. Wheels. Laganoff. That shot by Prick. Ferraro's blocked in front. And now Farmer wheeling for the last minute. Second, rather. Shot blocked by Jerry. Rolls behind the net. Engineers back to full strength. Farmer a drive right into the breadbasket of Marshall. And the engineers successful on that power play by the Minutemen. Engineers one for seven last night on the man advantage. But as Perry mentioned, what really killed them was the four power play goals against in seven attempts. As we have another ice maintenance stoppage here at the Fieldhouse. Six twenty-seven to go. Face off one by the engineers. They'll gain control. Moore dumps it off the glass and into the zone. And a whistle. And uh, offside, maybe icing. <laughs> Didn't cross center. RPI is back in action next week and just a single game against UConn here at the Houston Field. Also another Saturday single game. 
But uh, already a better start than last night, of course, and RPI getting another power play goal. That was big. Face-off here, won by the Engineers. Todd Burgess flips it off the boards to himself, then he gets knocked down. Penalty coming up on UMass. There's jam try at the side of the cage. And ready another penalty. What's it going to be? It's going to be a slash, it looks like. Who is it on? Penalty on UMass. Yeah, and the they door, got their doors up. open. Yeah, they don't have to figure out who it is. They probably were saying, that if anything, I tripped. Seven. Them. Kurt Keats, number seven, going off for tripping. He's making his case to the wrong guy as he tries to convince Deegan, but he's the linesman. He receives two minutes for time for the penalty, 13 minutes, 58 seconds. Seven of UMass keeps on a slash. 13, We're underway here. Beautiful save by Riley there. Here's a shot by Johnson, and that one's eaten up. Puck's still loose, though, and cleared by Ferraro. Minute 40 left to go on the advantage. Riley comes back behind his own cage. Power play. For the engineers, this is their third. As spilled at center ice was, or at the blue line, I should say, was Laka. Another clearance all the way down. Stopped by Marshall. Although it was on goal from 200 feet. Tommy Lee hands off for Burgess. And they lose it at the line, tipped on further. Here comes Trevino, all by himself, one on four. Throws it back towards his own zone. They're changing, and nearly too many men as he threw into his own bench area. Could have hit anybody. Anyway, kept in by Lee. Point. Ferner across. Hallbauer. Rister deflects in the air. And it'll be kept alive by Burgess. Burgess walking in, he missed wide. Oh, I got a piece. Yes, he did. Good save that time by the goaltender, Lindbergh. Now it's swatted out to center. Shots are 9-6 UMass. With four and a half to go in the first period. 25 seconds left on the power play. Ferner drops it off for Polino. He'll scoop it into the zone. It's gloved down. Shot coming and another stop there. This time with the glove for Lindbergh on Patrick Polino. It's kind of interesting how wide open the slot can get on some of these rushes. Both teams have enjoyed success in some space in between the hash marks. That is not something coaches want to see for their defensive structure. Delgaizo scored from that area. A couple of engineers have had some chances from that area. Shot coming by Mika and a save by Marshall on the rush. Three seconds left. That was a shorthanded shot for the Minutemen. Yeah, a lot of speed on this youth. Yeah. For this youth of the Minutemen roster here. Not a big team by any stretch of the imagination. Draw here in the RPI zone, won by the engineers Moore. Swatted behind for Grant. And back to even. RPI now one for three on the power play. UMass 0 for 2 so far. So certainly a better start. We talked about the penalty kill for RPI needed to be better. So far it has been. And a perfect night to begin. Otto Ville Lampinen had it for a moment. Now it's Moore. Will Riley up the boards. Pass Lampinen all the way down. This could be icing, and it is. Good a stoppage and a faceoff back in the RPIN. 3.28 to go first period in a 1 1 game. RPI women's hockey was in action today. They lost 3 1 at Robert Morris uh, a, a day after Lavisa Salander made 58 saves, second most in her career in a game in a 1 0 win. Here's Leonard into the skates of the intended target. That was Delgaizo. 
And now back comes RPI. Lepinen in deep, trying to center, swat it away. And now back comes Leonard for UMass. Four wide as they hit the center ice line, picked up by Samick. TJ Samick for the Engineers, junior from St. Paul, Minnesota, works it ahead. Now, knocked down was Laka, puck in deep for Billy Jerry. Seven points and uh, seven goals, five assists last year for Jerry. Now Samick takes a, uh, oh, he likes to shoot it down low. Kept in by Hayhurst. Laka rubbed up against the wall there. Looks like Jerry trying to kick it out of there. Jerry gets free. Penalty coming up. Going to be a hold. And a touch of the puck. Penalty, 2.34 to go. I think it's going to be holding. It is holding. On um, McCarr. McCarr, who's arguing his case. Yeah, he had his arms, both of them, around Jerry's waist. So, Coming out of the corner. Yeah. Good. That's what happens when you move your feet, though, if you're if you're Billy Jerry. And he's able to draw the penalty. The fourth power play coming up for RPI. They're one for three. To number 16, Kale McCarr. He receives two minutes more. Okay. Time for the penalty, 17 minutes, 26 seconds. 16 of UMass. Face off one by UMass. At 17:26, Engineers regrouping behind their own net. Now Lee through middle ice. Further for more, but he elects to just leave it in the corner. Now Lee a huge hit. Now it was a hit by Lee, and now fired right back down ice. There's another one. <laughs> finds Marshall from distance there for UMass. Here's Moore in the corner. Nice job to stay on his feet. And get some help from Burgess. Burgess stick handling. Back for Mears Moore. Loves his left wall. He scored a few goals over here. Here's Hayers, a shot and a save. Now Ferner. And that one I think hit the defenseman. Cleared down again by UMass. Halfway through the power play, minute 29 to go in the first period. An eventful one for both sides as we're tied at one. Uh, lost at the line, flipped up into the crowd. We get a stoppage here. Faceoff will stay in the zone, and UMass will not be allowed to change with 46 seconds to go in this power play. So maybe if RPI can win a draw here, they can catch a bit of a tuckered out Minutemen club, or at least a penalty kill unit. Yeah, Hayhurst is trying to line up quick. Let's, let's get him going. Face off in the UMass zone. One by the Minutemen. Vergara up the wall and all the way down. Riley going into it with Gaudette. Gaudette comes away with it. Back to the point. One-timer Felix hit the back of Hayhurst. This is the final minute of the play. Period. Last minute of play. And now Hayhurst into the zone. Stick handling. He gets tripped up on his way in. 17 to go in the power play and a clearance. That should just about do it for the man advantage. As Riley backtracks to his own zone. Will Riley stick handling. Across. Johnson ahead. Jake Johnson steps through a check. Penalty's over. RPI one for four on the man advantage. Samick off the bench to keep it alive does. 25 to go in the period. And a chance for Morello. Hopped off his stick. And now back comes UMass with speed. Del Geizo into the zone. He's wrapped up and spun around. Stays on it. Ooh, big hit against the wall by Samick. Now it's picked up by Grant with 10 seconds to go in the period. Wait, maybe one more rush here if the engineers want. Samick passed Morello. They wave off the icing. They say Morello was impeded. That'll do it for the period. 1-1 one, one score after one. I think the engineers just wanted to get out of that one even after a rough start. And they were able to get a power play goal off this Beautiful hand-eye coordination of Jacob Laka from a wrist shot from Will Riley. 
Miniman scored with Del Geizo's wrist shot from the slot with a couple of bodies in front. And official scoring for Laka's goal, Will Riley and Hayhurst on the assists. It was the reverse of 11 3, so that's 8.57. Engineers had eight power play shots to UMass's three. And as Perry mentioned, one for four on the power play, UMass 0 for two. Faceoffs 14 7 to UMass in that period. And the period ends with 11 8 shots in favor of the Minutemen. We'll take a break. More action in the second period coming up. RPI TV.
Yankee Trails, Red Front Pizza, Tri-City Rentals, Duncan, Toyota, CDTA, The Spocky Bowl, The Gaddy's Pub, Slide and Dirty, Ben and Jerry's, Warren W. Fan, Boucher and Clark Benefits, Wicked Smart, Gatherers Granola, Fryhoffers, Little Caesars Pizza, Howard Hanna Realty, RPI Chapel and Cultural Center, H2M Architects and Engineers, and Tri-City Valley Cats, proud sponsors of RPI Hockey. The RPI Pep Band. In other college ac ac action this afternoon, Colgate defeated UNH by a score of two to one. The game's in progress in the East. Early in the third period, it's RIT four, UMass Lowell three. After one period, Maine one, St. Lawrence zero. Also after one, it's Vermont one, Quinnipiac zero. And after one period of play in Schenectady, it's Nebraska-Omaha 2, Union 1. Hey fans, welcome fans. It's Danny and Rod and Aaron Carvalho out here. On behalf of our team, thank you for your continued support. Enjoy the game and let's go around. Ryan's Wake is proud to support RPI Athletics. Head downtown after the game, check out the pub kitchen at Ryan's Wake.
ready to start the second period here at the Houston Fieldhouse. RPI TV bringing you all the action of the 2018-19 men's and women's ice hockey schedule here in home contest. Carlos Garris, Jeff Morris, and the crew. Happy you're joining us on this Saturday evening. RPI and UMass tied at one apiece. As the opening draw is won by the Minutemen in the second period. Engineers getting another power play goal. Another goal from Jacob Laka, the freshman from Bratislava, Slovakia, to tie this game. Jeff, 1-1. Uh, have to be pretty happy for the engineers. Here's a shot that's blocked on its way through. Yeah, really good, uh, good hand-eye coordination from a freshman. That's, that's pretty critical because that's something that's really hard to teach. Right. And he's shown it a few times here. He scored a nice rebound goal last night. Because this one's going to leave the zone. All the way down. And icing is the call. Perry caught it. All eight shots from the engineers coming on the power play. They did have four of them in 20 minutes. So that's a decent chunk of the period. But you'd like to see a little more 5 on 5. It seems like a reverse of last night. Engineers' power play wasn't great. They did get one goal, I will say. But. 5-on-5, five five, RPI look like the better team. Now tonight, UMass has brought a little bit better 5-on-5, five five, and the engineers have taken advantage of their power play. It's also interesting, the uh, Minutemen's forecheck on the penalty kill has been really aggressive, at least on the beginning side of it. They have sometimes have sent two people behind the net. Face-off one here, poked along. Johnson, no. And now moved out to center ice. 14-7 were the face-offs in favor of UMass, so... RPI did win the face-off battle last night, but this time it's the Minutemen with the advantage so far. Help to the half wall. Makar, a shot blocked down by Johnson. And loose in the zone. There's a giveaway by Burgess. A real sloppy one, too, on the half wall. And now around the net. Uh, it's Pritchard. Good movement of the puck. And then a good stick there from Johnson. Spills his man. Hollering for a penalty there is the UMass bench. Not going to get it. Burgess took his man down in the slot. Now a backdoor feed looking for Trevino. That just didn't come off. Uh, actually, no, it was, uh, beg your pardon, Leonard on the back door. It's another centering pass all the way through. McCarr with it. Two goals, two assists last night. Engineers have kept him quiet so far twisting and turning. He's listed at 5'11", but I don't believe it. He walks his way in, all the way in, and missed high. What a play there. He's showing off his stick handling skills. He's a blue liner, folks. <laughs> He's got it back again. Makara Rister this time, blocked by Johnson. And now down low it goes. Back up top. Shot coming, tipped on goal. Uh, that was a good tip by number 19. And now uh, backhanded to center by Brady Ferner. Good display of how talented this young team can be in the offensive zone, Jeff. Yeah, there's some, there's some plays that the engineers want back, I'm sure, already. There's another miss clear. That's about three in a row now. Behind the net comes Keats all the way around. And it's blocked down. Good play there by Laka. Who else? He's been the story so far for this RPI season. Laka feeding it through is blocked. He'll get there first again. Jacob Laka skating in the circle. Laka backhander through the middle. No. Stepping in. Grant a shot right on and a save made. Good stop that time by Lindbergh. As Grant fired that one on goal, he sticked it right away. Engineers trying to keep the zone. That goes for naught. And now we get a whistle here and a hand pass called. And we get a stoppage. 16-39. That was RPI's first even strength shot of the game. Came off the stick of Tommy Grant. Face-off coming up in the zone. Draw here, 16-39 to go second period. 1-1 UMass and RPI. This is cleared out to center. Picked up by the captain, Tommy Grant, from Sparta, New Jersey. Engineers have numbers if they can get it in. And first one to it's going to be Donovan Ott. 
Ott, stick handling. Still on it, finds Grant. Grant walking in some room. Grant, a shot is blocked in front. Good block there by Vagara. And now Jaron Burke did not play last night. He's in the lineup, one of the two lineup changes the engineers made. As uh, taken down behind the goal was Burke, but we play on. And now stick handling. And moving out to center is Ferraro with some room. He elects to dump it in. Samick throwing a hit along the half wall. The other change for RPI was Tommy Lee in the lineup. As uh, sitting down were DeGrande and Bowman. Both making their collegiate debuts. That's offside and a hand pass. Pick your poison. 15.36 to go second period. 1-1 engineers and Minutemen from the Houston Fieldhouse. It's kind of surprising how loose this game is being played. Last time I witnessed was the exhibition University of Prince Edward Island. That game was a little bit tighter as far as play and room out there. It seems like these guys are just got all kinds of space to walk through normally dangerous areas. Face-off won by UMass here and a long pass to the neutral zone. Is connected upon. Now Tervino with speed into the zone comes Godet. Godet in centering pass broken up. Out to center ice it goes again. No penalty so far here in the second. RPI 1 for 4 the man advantage. UMass is 0 for 2. So staying out of the box is going to be big for the engineers so far. So good on that front. In fact, they took one right off the bat in this game, Jeff, and it really. Maybe could have set them back if they gave up a goal there, but no. They did give up the first one, but it was not on that power play. Now a shot coming and a goal. Chafee with the tally. And it's 2-1 to one UMass. Just a wrist shot from the point. Lyndon Marshall probably didn't even see it. Yeah. Even strength goalie. Two to one UMass leads here. As Ferraro is going to glove this one down. We have another hand pass and a stoppage. 14.32 left. It was a good shot there from Chafee. His uh, second goal on the season. Sister are going to go to Trevino, eight and two Del Geizo. Mark Del Geizo, two. Two, yeah. It's Mark Del Geizo dumped it in. Was scored by number 21, Mitchell Chafee. He was assisted by number eight, Bobby Trevino. And by number two, Mark Del Geizo. Trevino, and uh, you said it. Uh, Del Geizo on the assist. The, the defenseman, Del Geizo. And two, Del Geizo. Del Geizo. Here's Mika in the corner. Stolen away nicely. And worked along by Morello. Too far for Ott. They wave off the icing. Six minutes into the second. Good keep by Morello along the wall. Ott trying to cycle. Does get it to Morello. He's double teamed. And now to the near corner it goes. Hit on Ferraro. Puck to center ice. Stick handled by Hildenbrand. Hildenbrand a wrist shot. Blocked by Samick. And it's slammed in by Mark Delgaizo. The assister on the most recent goal. Polino. Touch pass to center for Morello. Jake Morello spins it near side. Somehow snuck it through some skates. Found Polino. Engineers are just on side. They dump it in and get a change. Defenseman behind the play at least. Tipped in deep by Bobby Kaiser making his first appearance of the year. Drop pass, nobody there. And a couple engineers, a little miscommunication. Neither of them took it. 
Last uh, came off a UMass stick, of course, so no icing here. On they come into the zone. Makar, a shot, and it's held onto by Marshall and Kale Makar. We saw him do it last night. If you weren't there, or weren't following, he went uh, basically coast to coast and scored a breakaway goal. A sight to see late in that first period. That the time made it four to one, and really made it tough for the engineers to try and come back in that one. Well, now I guess we see why he's drafted by the Avalanche, Perry. Second overall pick in 17. He's got some nifty moves. He did a lot of work down low and then found himself at the top of the key and just elected to wrist one down and before it changed. He's a very smart player. Understands that uh, just get the puck on net and good things will happen. Bobby Trevino on that goal, credited for the first assist, really made a, a really hustle play down into the zone to make that first hit and loosen that puck up before Mitchell Chafee gathered it up and walked all the way back up to the top of the slot from the wall. It's, we've seen that move a few times tonight already from the Minuteman where they really do that switch on the half board. Or D in the winger. And it seems to gather some room up at the top of the slot for just a shot, and they get bodies in front. And Lyndon Marshall's having trouble tracking that puck. Face-off won by the Engineers. As we're back to action here. Under 13 to go. Second period, 2-1 to one, UMass with the lead. Ferraro. A little bit of pressure comes from Whiffen. Carried into the zone by Leonard. John Leonard in. All the way around. No, he spins back to the corner. Point. Pass, Farmer, shot, deflected over the top. Made it hit Samick on the way through. Uh, they wrap up along the half wall now. Over skating it was Whiffen. Chance to get it back. Lobbed high in the air. Fair catch called for by Samick. No, not legal. Had to put it down. Able to swan it out to center ice. Ferraro. He'll ring it in. TJ Samick over to get it. Chips it up the boards, gave it right away to Leonard. Swept away by Lee to the side of the cage, trying to pin it there was... Uh, Marshall couldn't do so. Now flipped across the front of the net, and then Whiffen's going to dig it out of there. Farmer keeps it in. Wide a goal. Might have got a piece of it there on its way through. Just skipped uh, to the top of the crease. Uh, hemmed in right now are the engineers. Chipping up the boards, and that will leave the zone. To the excitement of RPI, he was able to get a partial change. Now Burgess looks gassed out there, but he's just putting a little pressure on, forcing UMass back to his own zone so the engineers can make the full change. Moving in Trevino, lost it. Chipped to center by RPI. Ferraro, no, it's going to be Felix. Colin Felix, freshman from Ocean City, New Jersey. Then clear up the far side boards. That'll leave the ice, so we'll get a stoppage here. Low shot totals in this one, Jeff. 14 to 9 in favor of UMass. Shots, uh, goals 2 to 1 in favor of the visitors. By the way, McCarr the, was the fourth overall pick in 2017, not the second. I misspoke. <laughs> Big difference there. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, maybe in salary, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll find out how, how many years he plays at college hockey as well. Seeing guys leave early, it's both good and bad, I guess. Good for the kid, also good for the school. Get that uh, recognition. Anyway, there's a shot coming. That was skips just wide from a car. <laughs> he came calling. We came calling. He answered, just missed the goal. Takes a hit that time from Hayhurst. And now uh, Makar again to the point. Shot coming. Fluttered all hit to the post. Might have been redirected. You get to see it just how active Makar gets. He's down in that corner a lot. The engineers are trying to and failing to leave the zone once again. Shot on Marshall, and that one's saved. Hayhurst now trying to help out his defenseman. Now Tommy Grant off the glass, and that one finally leaves neutral ice. Back into the Minutemen zone. Coming up on the halfway point of this game, engineers trying to find some rhythm here. There's a man breaking Hayhurst. Can they find him? Yes. Breaking in Hayhurst. Walking in. Save made by Lindbergh. 
Back to the point now. Ferner a wrister, and that one's gloved by Lindbergh as well. A couple of great opportunities there for RPI. All right, right before that, uh, that horn there to signify the halfway point, they'll clean some ice. A nice look by Morello. Little nifty backhand pass there. And they found Hayhurst breaking in. Yeah, Hayhurst with a breakaway. That was Mears Moore with the feed right on side. Just a little taste of RPI's offense there, probably for the first time since at least even strength in this game. We see some steady offense or just capitalization on turnovers from the Minutemen. Got the engineers hemmed in their zone pretty good. A lot of failed clears, even trying to chip off the glass. They can't even, are struggling to do that. Just lack of uh, Structure in the defensive zone breakout for the engineers. Face off coming up in the UMass zone. Hayhurst in there for RPI. Up against George Mika, sophomore from Naples, Florida. Someone's getting tossed on a dot, and it's Mika. Let me Anthony Del Geizo to take the draw. RPI wins it. And that one's offside. Just couldn't keep it in. That was Brady Ferner at the blue line. These young players getting a chance straight from Junior's Sioux City. USHL, Brady Ferner. Draw coming up now, neutral zone. Shot coming over the top of the net from Moore. Around the goal, Mears Moore. To the point. Ferner across. And now here's Tour Linden. Back to Polino, a wrist shot right on. And a save made by Lindbergh. Congratulations to our hockey student athlete, Rachel Clark, and tonight's second student athlete in the spotlight. Draw here. Another win on the draw for the Minutemen. And stolen away at center. Here comes Burgess. Has a man crashing. It's Lee. And it's stolen away. And now maybe a chance to break here. It's Pritchard. Jacob Pritchard, a wrist shot over the top. Has he got a breakaway try off? Going to tie up in the corner. Puck comes free to the point. Wrist shot. McCarr right on. Save made. Rebound got loose for a second. Net hopped off. It's Moringman. Jump right back on. And now it will be moved out to center ice. Race for it. Burgess on his horse. Going to beat out any icing potential. He goes down. Jerry over to help out. Lagging off. Wrapped up at the half boards. And now finally able to reset are the Minutemen. Two to one is the lead for the visitors from Amherst. Hit thrown there on Del Geizo, but he gets it deep. Tommy Grant double teamed. Worked up the wall for Laka. Laka trying to fire one through the seam. Shot in a glove save by Hayhurst. Held on to by the goaltender Lindbergh. And Laka showing he not only a shooter, not only a finisher around the net, but that was a pretty good pass. He zinged through some sticks and skates. 
Yeah, some people, you know, they just have that ability, those players. And Hayhurst is another one of those players as well. If they stay on the same line, I'm not sure what Dave Smith's going to do about that, but those two on the same line, really dangerous, speedy line, and then they got some playmaking abilities. And they put that big center there with Jerry in between them. And try to turn over pucks down deep and get that body in there and maybe be a presence in front. Face off here. Engineers win it. Burke trying to shield his man. Still Jaron Burke, the sophomore from Ottawa. Off for Ott. This is a big group out there. A couple of big guys out there with Morello. And now Ott trying to dangle his way to the slot area. Lost it. Finds Morello in front for Burke, and he couldn't steer it on goal. And now the puck deep in the corner. Out to center, now a chance for a two-on-one. Trevino. Shot, save Marshall. And it's kicked away to the near corner. Going to be a trip coming up on the Engineers. In the first power play this period. Trip is going on. Who they get? Ferner? Looks like it, Perry. Ferner off for tripping. 7.14 left. A couple of breakdowns by both teams in their defensive zones. First one by the Miniman left Jaron Burke all alone. All the attention was on Ott and Morello. And then, just like that, the Minutemen go the other way with a two-on-one and a nice save by Marshall. As the Minutemen find themselves on their third man advantage. And Chafee down low into the corner. We'll try to wrap it around for help, but Johnson is there for the 200-foot clear and a full change from the engineers and now we have a whistle as the Miniman play this one with a high stick. So the puck will be all the way down for Lindbergh's right. Face off here, engineers have it. Shot by Samick was blocked by Chafee. Shorthanded attempt there. Now here's Tommy Lee making sweet music in the corner. <laughs> Finally separated from the puck, and now Delgaizo drops it off. Wrong in by McCarr. Actually takes a True bounce off the Zamboni glass for the first time in a while. Shoveled towards center, but not out. Uh, another hand pass here. That's been the call of the night. Didn't take long for that uh, <laughs> R to come back on that. Oh yeah, that glass. That's that's way too clean though. We got dirty that thing up. <laughs> <laughs> it was only the engineers for a few days during the week, I guess, and the rest of the exhibition schedule. Face off at neutral ice. Still 51 seconds left on the power play. Trying to move in was Laganoff. That was stopped up by the engineers defensively. Gloved at and missed by. Ferraro, that'd be an error in baseball. Took his eye off the puck. Now Laganoff stick handling, nearly deked his way through. Engineers cleared again. 23 to go on the kill. Third power play opportunity for UMass here. And the first of the period for either team. To the RPI line, Trevino on for Ferraro. Ferraro walking in, a shot, he missed it wide. And Ferraro again, up top. Hands it off there. Farmer, back door wide off the shot there from Hildenbrand. And Engineers able to kill that one off. Into the zone comes Jerry, lost it. Cleared as far as center, gathered in 
by Hallbauer. And he'll shoot it back in. 17 13 other shots in favor of UMass. Two to one. Minutemen lead here. Under five to play in the second. Ferraro dumping in off the end boards. Kept in there by Keats. Now moving back towards the point is Kaiser. Shot coming, Ferraro, and a pad save made. As it's uh, moved it back into the corner. High off the glass and out to center ice. Maybe a chance for a two-on-one. Make it a two-on-two, -two. Burgess. Takes a shot, not handled very well there by Lindbergh. And the cavalry came, but fans didn't like the way Whiffen was dealt with in front of the net, but he was looking for scraps that maybe weren't there. Well, Lindbergh wasn't so sure himself off that wrist shot from Burgess coming down near side, short side. Phile Lindbergh making his first collegiate start from Espoo, Finland. I don't know if you mentioned earlier the same hometown as Engineers winger Otto Ville Lapinen. They both played for the Espoo Blues. I lied. They're both from Espoo, but Lindbergh didn't play for the Blues. RPI women had a, a former Blues player. I was going to say he Heidi. 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 Yeah, I remember that hometown vividly. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, Heidi, what was her? She changed her. I know she changed her last name. I believe to her mother's yeah, Heidi name. Maki and Mel. It was Heidi Maki, and then it was uh, 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 Niskanen? Yes. Yeah. Good call. Whew. Man. Going my, back a few my, years. My, there's some things in my brain. I don't you know. You can say it enough times, right? <laughs> it's very back. I, yeah, right. I think it's what it stems from. Anyway, very solid showing so far from Phile Lindbergh, Finnish goaltender here for UMass and we're seeing a lot of a lot more international players. We saw some Swedish players from play for RPI. Victor Lundgren last year, of course, a Swede. Uh, a couple players from Denmark now on the women's team here for RPI, but uh, plenty of foreign players. A third of the third ever Slovakian is on the roster and having a great start to his collegiate career in Laka. And Milos Babela and then uh, Valentin back in back in your day, back in my college days. Alexander Valentin. Yeah, Valentin. 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 Anyway, we're back to action here. 2-1 to one UMass leads. Flipped all the way down ice. And icing here. Milos had that great uh, Olympic Games. At least personally, a chance, I know I had a chance to talk to him when he was over there and really enjoyed himself. There he's back playing in his native Slovakia. That's just a... Uh a couple of Olympic athletes in the past decade have as Tour Linden Tour Linden right off the draw with a shot. We've talked to Matthias, I'm sure, back oh, yeah. when he played. For Austria, of course. That was the oh was that, was that Turin? Was that 06? Uh, that would have been too early for Lund. Yeah, you're right. No, it would have been too early. You're right. It had to be 10? No. Might have been 10. The 2010 Olympics, yeah. Because you're right. Lang graduated in... Oh, was he 2010 was Vancouver. Yeah. Face-off win here for UMass. We're getting off, we're getting off track here. <laughs> Jaron Burke back to the point for Riley. Riley filtering it right back down low. Jaron Burke shielding, looking confident on the puck. Tried to spin it in front. Then he grabbed his man and might have gotten away with one there. There's no calls coming. Trevino. Chafee is shot, and that one's blocked by Johnson. Had to block it. There were numbers in front there for UMass. Now RPI to center. Ott will shoot it all the way down. Burke will chase. RPI changing behind the play. I think UMass had a, had a good argument there as Jaron Burke tried to spin it in front and ended up grabbing onto the man, maybe trying to break out of the zone. Referee saw it as you know, coincidental contact. And RPI will take that. Here's Laganoff into the zone, wrapped up by Hayhurst. Ferraro across through, through the legs of Farmer. And now back across comes Marshall with the save. And it'll be lobbed out to center. Big time stop there by Lyndon Marshall. And now a shot there goes wide and out of play off the stick. Might have hit the pipe by Farmer. 
Yeah, I think that one hit the bar, or at least tipped it. But Lyndon Marshall coming out, way out of his net, almost leading with his face to try to get in front of that shot from Laganoff's stick. He was wide open in the, the weak circle. We'll get a better look at it here. Yeah, coming across, it popped right back out. He had to make another stop. Well, engineers win the draw. Lob to center, gets past a couple of skaters there. Lee then over skates, and now chipped back along by Boeing. Mears Moore behind the goal. Left over there, Boeing picks it up to the point. Shot coming, blocked down by Lee. Shot back in by UMass. Moore lobbed up off the glass center ice. Kicked at and missed by Farmer. Gathered in by Ferraro. Great speed by the San Jose Sharks draft choice. Sometimes may get overlooked by McCarr, but he talented in his own right. Very mobile. Slightly undersized the two of them, Ferraro and, and McCarr, but I, I still can't believe if Makar is 5'11". You're, someone doesn't have to bring a ruler over and prove that uh, to me. I'm with you, Perry. I don't, I don't <laughs> buy it either. Usually guys that try to improve their height on their, or lie about their height in a positive way, a, a, a taller way. Now we got a hand pass, and now Grant is paired off with Trevino, and they'll need to be separated. Well, this entire Minutemen roster is scraping six foot. Yeah, I, I don't, they're not a huge team. I'll give them that, but Makar is not 5'11". Just two guys listed at over 6'0". That's Gaudet and Kaiser listed at 6'2". And then six foot, uh, and Felix yeah. at 6'1". And Pritchard's 6'0". So nobody yeah. over 6'2 on this team. And they, don't, and they don't throw their body around that much. They're really a, a skating team, which is where hockey's headed for the most part. Yeah, I can see that's Hockey East. And, and you look at that coaching staff over there. And yeah. Benny Barr was a skating... Uh, Oh, that's the kind of, yeah, that's the kind of players these guys want to transform into. Chafee fakes a shot. Fed down low. All the way around it comes. Makar pinching in. Trevino takes a hit. Chafee. Tour Linden battling him for the puck. Moore had it for a moment. Makar again moving his way up the wall. Spin around a pass down low for Chafee. Chafee moving it across. Here's Del Geizo. Spinning it down low. Well read by Moore. He'll lob to center. Little alley oop for Linden, and he missed it wide. Down low. Here is Polino. Turning and turning. Uh, twisting one on goal. And the save is made on the redirection. Ottoville, uh, Ottoville Lepinen with the, with the redirect. Yeah, and Lindbergh had to be. On his game there, Le Lepinen was in front on the doorstep, and Polino just wheeling around the, the key there. A three-on-one, Linden let that one go, and the puck was rolling when he did it. I'm sure he's going to have to look at that one back and realize that he had numbers. Face-off here in the UMass zone. Draws now listed at 23-18, uh, to 18. so RPI is caught up in that department, which is good to see. Minute three on the clock. Clean win back. Hey, here's the wrist shot that's blocked in front. Second try wide from Laka. Lob down the middle of the ice. Hey, here's trying to turn it around. 45 to go in the period. Crowd on their feet. They want free stuff. Jerry's going to cycle. Behind the net it goes. Here's Farmer. Worked up the near side boards. Hallbauer steps, can't get it. Leonard. Leonard stick handling his way in. All the way in, and a save made by Marshall. Big time stop there by Lyndon Marshall to keep this a one goal game. Now back comes Hayhurst all by himself. Still Hayhurst, no. 15 to go. We might get one more rush out of this period. 10 seconds to go. Riley to carry. Drop pass here. Burgess throws it towards the net, blocked by Leonard. Shot coming. That one's blocked as well. And another backhander wide. And that'll do it for the period. 
Well, Lyndon Marshall had to step on his game for the last couple minutes there. A couple of big time stops to keep this at two to one. Shots end up being 21-16 in favor of UMass. And we'll step aside for the second intermission. You're listening to uh, RPI and watching RPI Hockey on RPI TV. Perry Oscaris and Jeff Morris will be back with more action in the third uh, after this.
RPI Hockey would like to thank the following sponsors, the Rensselaer Alumni Association, Nigro Companies, Patterson, Sampson, Ginsburg, and Griffin Law Firm, Bellini's Counter, Sodexo, the Hilton Garden Inn, Troy, National Grid Foundation, Turner Construction, the Desmond Hotel, Reifenberg Construction, the Recovery Sports Grill, E. Stewart Jones, Hacker and Murphy, Stanley Steamer, Stewart's Shops, BSN Sports, Nigro Companies, Retzler Honda, Repeat Business Systems, RPI Off-Campus Housing, and Correct Energy. All proud sponsors of RPI Hockey. Hey, with their award-winning chili, fall off the bone ribs, hand-cut steaks, and 10% off with your RPI staff or student ID, you can't beat Texas Roadhouse Barbecue. A legendary deal like this is only found at 105 Wolf Road in Colony. Texas Roadhouse, come dine with us. Hey fans, head to The Hill at Musa this weekend. The Hill, a beer garden and European staycation. Enjoy beverages and small plates. The Hill, 370, 379 Congress Street in Troy. Their gates open at 4 p.m. And The Hill is proud to support RPI Athletics. Rensselaer runs United tomorrow, October 14th. Join us at the Tech Park for the 5K Run Walk and Kids Fun Run. It starts at 9.30 tomorrow morning. Proceeds benefit the United Way of the Greater Capital Region. Stop by and register tomorrow morning.
Ready for the third period here. RPI down two to one. In a game uh, really much more indicative, I think, than how yesterday played or felt. It did not feel like a 6-1 game. It felt a lot more like a one-goal game or maybe a two-goal game. But so be it. Game, little got a, game got a little out of hand for the engineers. And, and here we are. And this one's poked towards goal by Burgess, swatted away uh, by the netminder. And Lindbergh, back out to center it comes. Do you have an attendance number here, Jeff? I thought I'd heard one. Yeah, we do. Icing here on RPI. 22-15 here at the Fieldhouse tonight. 2,000. 215. Face-off coming up here. Going to be Laganoff up against Whiffen. And one by, looks like UMass there, swatted out to center by Brady Whiff and all the way down. It was deflected, so no icing here. McCarr back to pick it up for the Minutemen. McCarr tipped along by Trevino. And now gathered in again. Good outlet pass here. Otto Ville Lepinen. Across for Tour Linden. Linden trying to center, comes in on goal. And a save had to be made there from Fila and Lindbergh. Yeah, Perry, uh, wide open ice yesterday night, right? Yeah, a little bit. Well, yeah, the Olympic sheet did. I think it did affect the game as much as you want to say, you know. And I'm sitting here saying these two teams are playing like this is Olympic ice with all this <laughs> room. And yeah, a little bit, a little bit haphazard, you could say, but seemingly both ways absolutely both ways a lot of room out there on the sides and also in the slot face off here one by UMass shot around behind by Colin Felix out to center ice all the way down in fact and Lyndon Marshall says icing and the officials agree exactly one minute into the third period two to one UMass leads but you feel like the engineers are on the cusp of tying this one up just the way this game is gone this game has another, at least another goal in it I think I would agree, and you know, it remains to be seen if the teams are going to tighten up or, or the refs are going to tighten up their whistles. If you're an engineer fan, you hope there's another goal in this game. <laughs> well, so we're kind of stuck where we are, right? Out of the zone comes Anthony Del Geizo, a shot and a good stop there by Marshall. He didn't allow a rebound. That was the defenseman Felix with the try. Dave Smith, coach RPI, has full confidence in Lyndon Marshall. Talked about it in the weeks upcoming of the season, and Marshall showing why, especially at the toward the end of that second period, and and even here he's taking the reins of this starting job. Face-off win for RPI, and they cleared off the glass to center. Bouncing puck picked up by Laka. Trying to kick it to himself. Lost it right before he got to the line. Mika up ahead. Good drop pass there. Walking in Hildenbrand. He'll work it to the half boards. Now down low it goes. Del Geizo. This is Anthony Del Geizo. He wears 12. His brother wears 2. And that one will be slapped right back out to center ice. And then lobbed back in. TJ Samick for RPI. Playing in his 42nd game for the Engineers. A goal and 3 assists in his career. Ferraro shields it away, but then gave it away. Lee fights for it, can't keep it in. Grant will wire it back in off the end glass. And a little forecheck pressure from Whiffen, nearly stole it away. Every time he does something like that, you think back to that shorthanded goal he scored against Harvard right here at the Houston Fieldhouse at that end of the ice. You now leaving behind the goal is Whiffen. Stolen away there. Burgess tried to filter it further below the goal line. It's swatted away. Pinching in is Moore. Kept in by the engineers nicely there on the dump in. Whiffin shielding. Gets some help from Burgess. Squirts free. Picked up by Keats. And it'll be moved on out into RPI territory. Back across from here is Moore. Lee tips it deep. Early stages of period number three here at the Houston Fieldhouse, home opener of the 2018-19 season for Engineers Men's Ice Hockey. 
As it's corralled here by Riley off for Lepinen. He'll just lob it to center. Gloved down by McCarr. Thrown ahead. Gathered in by Chafee. He's got a goal tonight. Right now it's the difference in this game. As it's worked in deep. Johnson left behind for Riley. He takes a hit. Does Jake Johnson playing his second collegiate game. Polino to center. Looking for Lepinen. He's offside. No touch here. Engineers touch up and we Continue play. Thrown into the skates of Paulino, but somehow it finds Makar. Makar stick handling all the way in. He put it wide in the end. And gathered in by Ferner. High off the glass to center. Trying to knock it down was Leonard. More fluid play. And this will be through Samick, but they wave off the icing, of course. He lifted the stick of Laganoff. Brady Ferner. Tipped along by Burke. Well, I thought he had gained the red line. But uh, linesman here on the near side, that's Deegan. Not listed here on my line sheet, but uh, yeah, that was Deegan. All right, well, Deegan's here. <laughs> Just a couple feet from the red line. That was a good call by Deegan. Okay. But the engineers have settled their breakout down in the third period. At least they're making more crisp passes coming out from the dashes, from the hash marks. RPI wins the defensive zone faceoff and just lobs it down the middle. This will not find its way to Lindbergh as it's picked away by Felix. And here comes Colin Felix. Near side connection. RPI looks like in a, some kind of a 1-2-2 two, two maybe through the neutral zone. With Burke up high there. Leonard lost it. Gets it back. Fires a shot saved by Marshall. And lob back out to center. Gather again. Back to pick it up. Colby uh, Vegara. Out of Malden, Massachusetts. A couple of Mass uh, excuse his natives on this team. Including Leonard who's from Amherst. Shot in. Samick across for Hayhurst quickly. He'll throw a little saucer pass on for Laka. Laka Rister. That one's blocked down. Another try is blocked and the puck goes high in the air. Twice blocked and Laka is hurt. Both plays were blocked by Ferraro. We play on here as Laka will skate back. Looks like he might hurt his shoulder. Dumped in. And he'll ride the ball along to the near side half boards. Now thrown in front all the way through. Another shot comes in. And now Hayhurst. He gets dumped in the corner. Penalty coming up here on UMass with 14.35 to go in the third. It's going to be a cross check. And the engineers are going to go on the power play. Yeah, not good news for the engineers if Laco just went out up the dressing room ramp with his seemed to be favoring his left shoulder after he was tossed on his second attempt of the shot down low. He made a good collection of that Hayhurst rink wide pass. And Anthony Del Geizo is going to go for cross checking Mears Moore here at 1435 left to go. And UMass is all lined up, but Coach Smith has his power play unit still on the bench going Anthony over some things. Cross-check in El Geizo, as Jeff mentioned, power play number five for RPI. The first power play since the first period. There were no penalties on UMass in the second. Face-off win here for UMass. They'll work it up the glass and all the way down. Jake Johnson on the chase. Man behind him is Trevino. Riley looking for his, his first, uh, I guess his second point. He has an assist tonight. But first goal, remember he started off red hot last year. I think at five goals in the first six or seven games. Then cooled off considerably because this one's cleared down. Yeah, 
for the shot. Down ice uh, come the engineers now on the power play for the minute 13. We get a whistle on offside. It's kind of interesting to see the Minutemen clog that neutral zone, even with four guys. Seem to be reading RPI's breakout rather well. And RPI only having success when they fire it in for a dump. It should be a last resort on a power play unless you have the wheel play set. Another draw loss, so the RPI is going to have to come back 200 feet again. And here is Ferner for RPI. Drop pass here across for Hayhurst into the zone. We've seen them run this breakout last night. Sometimes successful, sometimes not. Moore will work it deep for Hayhurst. Double team comes. Now Boeing trying to work it out. Engineers keep it in the zone. 42 to go in the power play. Here's Moore. Up the wall for Polino, lost it in his skates. Trying to work it back down low, though back to the point for Moore. Up top for Ferner, into the slot, Hayhurst down low, and it was stolen away. Well read by Ferraro, and he, he has thoughts of skating shorthanded, but quickly changes those thoughts and dumps it in. 20 seconds to go on the power play. Moore. He'll stick handle through center, drop it off for Hayhurst this time, flipped up the wall. Towards a standing Ferner, it's actually Hayers who jumps on it next. And it's backhanded right back down. This power play is about to expire. And it will. RPI 1 4 5 on the man advantage. It's still a 2 to 1 game. Here comes Whiffen. Jam try, backhand shot. How did that not go? Rebound trying to stick it home. Uh, what a shot there. Good stop, I guess. I think that that went off Colin Felix's Now a shot there by Samick is blocked as well by 18, Gaudet. And now shot down. Will this be icing? They wave it off, even though Tommy Grant's the first one to it. Well, Coach and Smith isn't going to be happy about that one. No. <laughs> Entire RPI bench upset about that. And now the fans are letting them hear it as that one probably should have been called off the even race at the dash marks and RPI is going to get called for icing here. Winning number in tonight's 50, 50 drive. Even though Lepinen had a chance of getting that around the wheel. And now Coach Smith is really giving an earful to the ref. As we approach the 11 and a half mark in the third period. Draw coming to Marshall's left. Yeah, face off won by RPI. Played behind the goal. Turning with it now is Pritchard back to McCarr. Firing wide. And off the glass and out. McCarr back to get it. Who touched it, so no icing here. <laughs> Icing has become the hot topic of the third period with 11 12 to go. Here's Leonard. Stick handling into the slot, fires wide. Behind the goal, Aganoff. Point. Ferraro. Shake and bake, throws it off the glass. Swatted towards the point. More Ferraro. That one high as well. Bit of a firing range here, but not finding the target. Morello is going to wrap this one around. Picked up there by Ferraro. Tried to dangle past Riley. Wasn't having any of that. Now Burke pinned up against the boards. Trying to dig it out. Does. One-handed along by Farmer. Gathered in by Riley. First half of this third period is kind of grinded by Jeff. Not a lot going on, but uh, Engineers trying to change that here in the second half. Polino. Walking in, he fired wide. Right, the engineers just had to complete a change right there, so good play by Will Riley. Worked up ice. Is this going to be icing? My friend Deegan says yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mock cheer from the home standing engineers fans. And a draw coming up in the UMass zone. 
No TV timeout here. Cannot be done on an icing. Even though we come up to the halfway point. Whiffin to take the draw. Up against Godet. One by UMass. Felix. Backhand of the long for Chafee. Chafee ladles it up the boards. Too far out in front of Tavigno. And now chopped at by Burgess. Can't get it out. Spun down was Chafee, and the puck comes out of the zone. Felix takes a look around, finds Chafee, hops off his stick. Hallbauer across for Ferner, up ahead for Lee. He gets crunched along the wall by Chafee. Our play will start over. Ferner crosses center, dumps it in wide of goal. And now Felix again. Connection here to center. Stick handling. That was Mika. He'll try and chase. One hand swat from Moore separates him from the puck. Tommy Grant down the middle. Flubs it into the corner. Hayhurst there. Back towards the point with it. Lost it. And now Mika to skate. Ran into Moore. Turned around quickly. Hayhurst stick handles. Across. Looking uh, was lapping in. Tried to feed it right back across the blue line. And now back comes UMass. Missing on the hit was Tommy Grant. But it did enough to remove the puck from the puck carrier. And now fed near side. Right into the stomach of Hayhurst. He knocks it down. Grant. Through center. Past everybody. This could be icing. And it is. 8.31 to go, third period. RPI trying to penetrate this UMass defense. They're having a little bit of trouble doing so. And don't think Laka has returned. No, you're French. right. You're right. It's not good news for the engineer roster, but Hayhurst is doing his part. They are seeming to be all over 100 feet. They're trying to make something happen offensively. Yeah, this is where the extra skater comes in, although RPI addressed an extra defenseman. I'm sure they can try to get an extra shift out of those guys. And a guy like Mears Moore, I know he's playing defense again, but he has spent some time at forward last year if they really needed someone to. Shot coming, deflected wide by Leonard. And now Farmer centering, save made there on Pritchard and covered up by Marshall. What a stop. Marshall's three for three for his last three big stops in the slot. Pritchard wide open for a quick bang bang play right in the crease. As we look, take a look, he has to go left to right with that yeah, right good pad. Stop. Real good stop. Good springs, though, to hop on it, too, because who knows what's coming next. And another big save here. So with 7.58 to go in this one, shots at 24 to 18 UMass. A little more controlled game. A little more, the wide openness is, has slowed down a bit here, Jeff, in this third period. Yeah, the passes are becoming crisper. And it seems that you mentioned the 1 2 2 from RPI, and maybe they're trying to settle things or slow things down so they can execute a decent breakout and try to get a turnover in the neutral zone and catch UMass in a transition game. And all they need is one mistake. Of course, it's really all anybody needs, but UMass demonstrating some great mobility on defense. Their blue line can really move the puck well. And RPI has to throw a little bit more bodies around if they want to slow them down. Folks like Odd and Burke, Billy Jerry, they really have to. Brady Whiffin's been throwing some hits too behind the opposing net on the forecheck. That's what really has to get going if they want to wear down that mobile defense. All right, that's our last media stoppage, isn't it? Wasn't it? Yes. All right. You got it. <laughs> no more breaks here on out. Just hockey. 7:58 to go. Oh, that might be icing. You never yeah, know. That's true. 
No more extended breaks. As walking in, Ferraro a shot. That one caught the shoulder of Marshall. And now here is Farmer. Ferraro down low for Chafee. He gets roughed up by Riley. Trying to jam it up the boards. Taken off the wall by Trevino. Back to the point. Ferraro just works it right back down low. Off the side of the cage. Chafee trying to walk it out. Save made by Marshall. And the rebound pops free. Gaudette. Gaudette with the shot. And Marshall did enough to keep it out. Welcome. I'm Jerry. Oops. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Welcome. I'm Billy Jerry. October 20th, we host Youth Conference Family Media. We'll see you here in the East Field. Face off coming up in the RPI zone. Whiffin up against uh, Mika. Gotta keep them on their toes. Next weekend is family weekend. <laughs> if you guys couldn't hear Billy Jerry over the PA. Lifted off the glass, off of the back of the head of Lee, and RPI thinks the faceoff should be in the UMass zone. Officials will talk it over. I don't know how it could have gotten to the UMass zone at that point, but it is on their side of neutral ice. Plenty of time left in this game to find an equalizer. As RPI has put itself in pretty good position against a very talented team. And if you missed my interview I did with uh, Ben Barr on WRPI last night, he, they think, the coaching staff thinks, this could be a, a home ice team, a top four team in Hockey East. So, of course, I'm sure a lot of Hockey East coaches think they're going to have top four teams, but I don't think Ben Barr would lie to me. So, there you have it. Fed all the way down. <laughs> This is icing on RPI. We're going to stop with just 6.54 to go. They're a talented team, and last year they are right around 500 with a lineup that was majority freshmen, sophomores. And if you have guys like Ferraro and Makar that you can throw out there, you know, half the time. Well, Pat, yeah, you're right, Perry. They certainly made their way north a third of the, the time, league. at least. Yeah, from right. Where they were five, six oh, years ago. Absolutely. I think they had a five win season in there, a six win season. So uh -oh. maybe the, the blueprint, really, for what RPI is trying to accomplish here. Huge incoming class for RPI, including three transfer students that will be eligible by Christmas time. There's a puck ramped up in the air off the stick of Moore. Uh, you mentioned when a new coaching staff comes in that sometimes you have to get them from all different walks. They may not even be freshmen. They might not have a lot of eligibility left. Donovan Ott, a showcase of that last year, around January. And he was solid in, the I think, the 13 games we saw of him. Yeah, 13 games last year, a goal and three, uh, three goals and one assist. He showed a strong shot and just a, a willingness to play hard. And there's a huge hit at center away from the puck, or at least I thought it was, but... Had to be, the puck had to be involved for that to be legal. Here's Chafee around the goal. Still Chafee circling. Uh, hit the stick of uh, Lappin in. That one, the shot came in. Sticked away there by Marshall. Chafee on his way into the zone. Drops it off. Hit, I think, on Gaudet. Now he jumps right back on it. Under six to go in the period. Felix across. Here's Farmer. Pulls up, takes the shot. Redirected wide. And that was Gaudet on the redirection. Missed the net entirely into the corner. This will go all the way down. No icing here. Out of his goal is uh, Phile Lindbergh, who hasn't had a whole lot to do in this period. I think just two shots for the engineers here in the third. Puck bouncing towards the RPI line into the zone. Riley's going to try and sweep it out of there. Trying to use the net as a screen to get away from Mika. He'll spin it back to the far side. Polino towards center. Lepinen throws a hip check into his man, and we get a, a hand pass here and a stoppage. 15 15 to go. Engineers looking for a way to generate some offense without their offensive threat. The guy who has two goals on the season, both of the engineers' tallies, Jacob Laka, who's in the 
locker room with an injury. And we've saw the Minutemen fast blue line on display here in the middle of this third period. They move the puck so well and they reverse and transition so well. It almost looks like they have a power play in the past few minutes, just working the puck around the perimeter and eventually they get it to the front. But Lyndon Marshall has really stepped up his game. A couple of those shots, Perry, he hasn't even seen. They just bounced off of him. He yeah. made himself big in the crease. He's been busy fighting him his own battles at, at the top of the blue there. And he's given his team a chance in this game. That's all you can ask your goaltender. 25 stops on 27, or 25 saves on 27 shots. And so far, uh, someone take a timeout here? I didn't, I, I didn't see it, but this is a 5.15 mark. Yeah, they must have taken a timeout. We'll see if they... We'll find out from the scorer's booth here. Anyway, ne next game for the Engineers is uh, next Saturday, a week from tonight, against UConn. What do you got? It was only a media timeout, the six-minute <laughs> mark one. Okay. I didn't see anyone signal for a timeout. And they didn't really do any ice maintenance, so. No, you're right. Sometimes they take that to do the, at least in front of the benches, but. Anyway, light on staff tonight. I, I thought we had, I thought we were done with stoppages, but I was wrong. I think it's 14, 10, and six. Yeah, you're right. I might have said eight before. Yeah. That was that was on Jeff, everybody. Of course, I gave <laughs> you Max's first goal to Bobby Kaiser too. Yeah, well, before I corrected it. Well, well, it's okay. Everybody makes mistakes. We just correct them. Here comes Pritchard to center. He'll dump it in. Johnson over to get it, and icing is the call to the chagrin of some of the. Coaching staff here in the press box. There was for a UMass. late scoring yeah. change on that first goal. That subtract the second assist, so it only should be Del Geizo right from Felix, and that was we, it. We had Mika as well, I think, but yeah. he lost the puck and doesn't get an assist for losing the puck to the engineers there. Accuracy is key. Yeah, I think Samick tried to chip it up the boards right to Felix. Face off here, one back by RPI, but out of the zone. Under five to play. Brady Ferner tipped in deep by Whiffen, and they will chase. Here's Farmer around to the near half boards. Moore pinching in, trying to keep it alive. Lobbed to center. Jacob Pritchard waiting for it there. The former fighting saint will dump it in. Slapped around, waiting for it, Todd Burgess. And he throws it in the middle of the ice, and could be trouble, although Burgess lifts the stick of Trevino, then knocks him down in the corner. Burgess. Up the wall for Whiffen. Hit thrown there. Puck stays in. Trevino lost it. Now Burgess throws it away. Makar. All eyes on Kale Makar as he dumps it in and chases on his own. Ferner throws it off the back of the net. Moore wrapped up with Makar. And he continues to work. Spinning through Moore. Still Kale Makar. Twisting and turning in the corner, but Moore is not letting him go anywhere. That motor you can just see from a car, he will not stop. Yeah, finally Moore just had to put a body <laughs> into him. I mean, that's what you have to do. And I think Coach Smith talked about it last night before the game, or maybe even during midweek during media time. We're gonna have a stop at your puck is frozen with 345 left. With these mobile defensemen, you have to put a body on them or else they're gonna walk right around you. So 345 to go. We're out of immediate timeouts here, so we should get a face-off soon. As we're almost a quarter past the hour on the East Coast, we'd like to thank all of you for joining us tonight. RPI TV's coverage of Engineers Hockey as it's lobbed up uh, and gloved down. Flipped to center, uh, Tour Linden. Nice job to get out of the way by Lee to avoid the offside whistle and allow RPI to set up its forecheck. They're being a little more aggressive, as you would imagine, with Time dwindling here. Mika, shot Boeing, save made by Marshall. RPI looking for offense to come from somewhere. I'm sure you know they'll pull Lyndon Marshall if we get down to it. So keep an eye on Marshall. Maybe a chance to break three on two. No, dumped in by Lee. He goes off on a change. 
Back comes UMass, 3.05 to go. Hildenbrand in. Wrist shot sticked away by Marshall. Off comes Riley. Into the attack, Will Riley. Backhand shot, save made. And behind the goal now. Will Riley taking matters into his own hands there. Getting that shot off. Now Leonard, he'll cycle. Past Ferner, picked up by Jerry. High in the air and knocked down at center ice. Chipped in deep by Donovan on. He'll go off on a change. Leppin in the one man chasing. 2.15 to go. Still in the net is Marshall. Leonard at right in front of his own bench. Flipped in deep by Pritchard. Leonard stops it there. Helps it on further for more. Oh, fanned on the pass there. Ferner. And now a chance to move into the zone. Shot coming, saved by Marshall. He holds on. That was Jake Gaudet with the opportunity. And Marshall equal to it. Yeah, it's just a young move by Brady Ferner. Something you don't really see a veteran defenseman do. Outlet pass, last man back. You really have to be sure about that play on your stick. And he just let it just come off his heel. And now RPI is going to take its timeout. I mean, good move by Coach Smith to settle his players down and get his best line out there for the last two minutes here. Shots, uh, shots attempted. Mind you, this is not the official stat, shot stat. 62 to 40. UMass. Uh, shots on goal, which is what are called shots in hockey, 30 to 19 in favor of the Minutemen. RPI one for five on the power play tonight. UMass held scoreless. I mean, it's a big difference from last night, and UMass has uh, four fewer goals, so there, there it is. <laughs> 0 for three tonight are uh, the Minutemen. They were four for seven last night on the power play. And staying out of the box, key. There were we had a time of possession. Right. We don't have that. that. It would be interesting to see because UMass has really controlled play here at various points. RPI's had some rushes, but the last 10 minutes or so of gameplay is Lyndon Marshall's needed a timeout, I'm sure. Getting down to it. We'll see how long they go with Lyndon Marshall between the pipes here for RPI and try to get that extra attacker out there, try to tie this game up. Face off here. Whiffin. One by UMass. So uh, Gaudet slapped to the corner. Whiffin trying to work it up the wall. Burgess ties his man up there. Gaudet for UMass and now Chafee. Chafee down low, centering, kick save made. Rebound in front, they score. It's Chafee on the rebound. And it's three to one. Yeah, just, it all started from a loss and they just, again, could not clear that zone. They're having trouble all night. They get the puck five feet from the blue line. And this one just couldn't get off the half wall. They got numbers on the half wall. They just couldn't win the puck battle. And Jake Johnson got beat. And if Lyndon Marshall let that one go to the far corner, it'd probably be a different, out different output. But Chafee gets the second goal. Makes it three to one. More around it goes. Out to center, Polino trying to jump on it. Marshall still may come off here in the final minute. It's only still a two goal game, but doesn't mean you don't pull your goalie. This is the final minute of play in the period. That's good.
Marshall is off with 40, 50 seconds to go. As six skaters are on for the engineers. Down with three to one. Takes a little bit of the heat out of the moment when you're down by two, but you still press for that second goal anyway. Point, Samick. Waiting, firing. Hit bodies in front. And a save made on a shot by Donovan Ott. Ott around. Back to the point for Samick. Gets it back from Polino. Blocked by Pritchard. Samick will drive it in from goal. Uh, and a save made there. And that'll do it. Samick from center ice, the final shot in this one. And UMass takes it 3-1. to one. Your thoughts, Jeff? RPI played much better than they did last night. And they weren't able to come away with a win. But UMass proved to be the challenge that we expected coming into this opening weekend. And they were that. Just seemed like they needed an extra attacker to have any kind of puck presence in their offensive zone. It was just a couple of rushes. Lyndon Marshall certainly had a heck of a game for being seemingly facing shots at every minute. Final shots in this one were 32-21 UMass. Goals scored two by Mitchell Chafee, including the game winner, the lone RPI goal, Jacob Locke. I hope he's okay. He scored a power play goal at 11.03 of the first period. Other goal came off the stick of Anthony Del Geizo from Colin Felix. I'd like to thank all of you for watching tonight's game. Final score was UMass 3, RPI 1. You've been watching live coverage of Engineers Hockey on RPI TV. I'm not compared to you guys, so like, I get soft.